Hey, what's up folks, how's it going? This is Watch. So for the past couple of weeks, I've been testing out this thing right over here. This is the new Alienware Steam Machine. And basically this is a full on computer in a form factor that resembles like a small gaming console, but it's running the Steam OS platform, which is basically Linux running a Steam client. And we're gonna be taking a look at the gaming performance of this thing, take a look at the internal architecture and really determine if this thing is worth it. If you're interested in perhaps getting one of these or seeing what what this thing has to offer just in terms of its gaming capabilities. Stay tuned and let's find out. Now essentially the Alienware Steam Machine is identical to the Alienware Alpha that we saw last year. In fact, the Alpha was supposed to be the Steam Machine, but I guess Valve took a little bit longer to standardize the whole platform. So thus we have this new console over here. And essentially the hardware is identical to the Alpha. The only difference is obviously the Steam Machine is running Steam OS, which is simply the Debian distribution of the Linux operating system that has been tweaked to boot directly into the Steam big picture mode. So therefore you have a couch friendly console experience that PC gamers will be right at home with and really have no complaints in terms of the navigation and user interface. But of course if you want you can go directly into the Linux desktop and do a little bit of exploring because this is basically a Linux PC. Now I've actually had quite a bit of experience with the SteamOS. I actually installed it on a custom PC and uh, there's some general complaints that I have with it. One, the performance optimization is not as good as what you find with Windows. We're going to get into the benchmarks later on to this video so stay tuned for that but the biggest problem with steam os is you don't really have access to the full games library and when you take a look at the alienware steam machine there's supposedly over 1400 linux or steam os games to choose from you do have a lot of great independent titles but if you do want to play some of the more modern contemporary games AAA games you're very limited in those aspects of installing those games locally now obviously you do have the in-home game streaming capabilities that's available on all steam Steam clients so you can stream all of your PC games from the full Steam library from your PC to the actual Steam machine but that actually defeats the purpose of having a standalone console in the first place if you're just going to stream your games might as well just get the $50 Steam link and save yourself the $400 and avoid this thing altogether now let's talk about the Steam controller Valve has been hyping and developing this thing for many years and this is the final version and as you can see basically at the center point you have two circular touchpads the one on the left is kind of like a d-pad and the one on the right acts as your mouse controller now with the haptic feedback system you basically get the impression of dragging your finger across a concave textured surface and the sensation does help you determine your mouse positioning and you could do certain things like flicking your finger to accelerate your mouse movement which is certainly handy on certain functions where you want to move your mouse really quickly at a sudden moment now one of the things you're going to notice about the vibration motors in this thing is that they're kind of loud and uh, certainly a little bit distracting especially if we want a game in absolute silence Now for the most part, when you're playing games designed for the keyboard and mouse, the uh, Steam Controller is certainly a passable experience and it's perfectly fine for playing real-time strategy games or any other title that doesn't require critical timing at a sudden notice. And that essentially means that when you're playing action-based games, whether it be third person or first person, it certainly doesn't beat the experience that you get with a real keyboard and mouse. And from my experience, even with a lot of practice, it's still not as good as having two physical thumbsticks like you have on the Xbox controller or even the PlayStation for controller and for most people that are used to having a living room gaming experience they're most likely going to opt for a traditional game pad that uses uh, thumbsticks rather than the touch pads we have on the steam controller now moving forward, let's get into the hardware of the Steam Machine. Now one of the things you'll notice right off the bat is how compact this thing is. It's much smaller than the next generation consoles. Unfortunately, you do have to deal with a pretty hefty power brick, which kind of sucks. But the actual box itself is very clean, nicely laid out with the USB 2.0 ports at the front of it. You have plenty of connectivity options at the back, including HDMI in or out. So you can actually hook up another HDMI device to this thing and use it as an extra input 
remote device. Furthermore, you do have some customization options with the RGB LED lights located at the front and you can basically change the brightness and color combination of both those two lights, which is definitely kind of cool if you want to customize your console. Furthermore, if you look at the bottom of the machine, you'll actually find a little compartment that houses the uh, dongle for the Steam controller or any kind of wireless receiver, which is definitely nicely integrated. Furthermore, in terms of connectivity, you have a Bluetooth 4 as well as you have a dual band AC networking adapter. So you have pretty fast wireless connectivity. Obviously, you still have the gigabit Ethernet option if you want the best connection to your network possible. Now, continuing forth, we actually have the base configuration of the Alienware Steam Machine, which starts around 449. And that comes with the Intel Core i3 4170T dual core chip that has hyper threading enabled. So you have four threads and it can turbo up to 3.2 gigahertz. This also comes with four gigabytes of RAM. Now, if you do want to option up, you can get a faster CPU as well as more RAM if you so desire. But no matter which version of the Steam Machine you get, you're going to get a version of the GTX 860M, which has two gigabytes of a video memory as well as 640 CUDA cores. It would have been great to have an option for a faster GPU, but sadly that's not the case. Now, one of the nice thing about the architecture of the Steam Machine is that you can actually upgrade some of the internal components. So if you want, you can upgrade your hard drive to a solid state hard drive, which is going to be much faster than the 2.5 inch 7200 RPM 500 gigabyte hard drive that comes equipped with this thing stock. Furthermore, you can also upgrade the memory. You can see that we have four gigabytes over here, but you can easily add another stick of a laptop style DDR3 memory. And if you take a look at the CPU, it actually is just using a plain socket 1150. So you can easily actually upgrade the CPU by yourself. And if you find a good deal on perhaps a, another CPU, you can swap it out later if you want better gaming performance. But at the end of the day, games really depend upon your GPU. And that's sadly one thing that's completely integrated into the motherboard and that cannot be upgraded. Now let's finally get into the performance test that we've been talking about all throughout this video. And one of the things that I wanted to do is obviously benchmark the native games available on the Steam OS running on the Steam machine. But I also want to do a comparison between how the Steam OS 2.0 compares against Windows 10. So what I actually did is I installed Windows 10 onto the Steam machine, which is certainly possible because it's just like a regular computer. And I basically played the exact same games and uh, performed the exact same benchmarks. And we're going to do a side by side comparison. So that way you have a good understanding on uh, what the capabilities are with the Steam machine as it is. So the first thing I want to benchmark was the CPU. And to do that, I just used Geekbench. And here you're looking at the multi-core and single core results on the uh, Steam OS versus Windows with the same exact hardware. And as you can see, there's definitely a discrepancy where Windows is definitely getting a faster result, both in terms of the single core and multi-core score. Next, I wanted to do a synthetic gaming benchmark. So I pulled up Unigine's uh, Heaven benchmark, set the resolution to 1920 by 1080, had high detail settings with no anti-aliasing. And here are the results over here. Basically, we're getting about 46.5 average frames per second on the Steam OS versus on Windows 10, we're getting 48.8 frames per second. So again, with the same exact hardware with uh, the different operating system, you're seeing a major discrepancy between the two when you're taking a look at this benchmark. But let's actually take a look at some of my real world gaming tests and see how the Steam OS stacks up on Windows 10 and just look at the general gaming performance of the hardware. So I'm going to shut up now and you guys can take a look at the results.
Now, just to wind up everything we talked about in this review, we're gonna go through the pros and cons of the Alienware Steam Machine. We're gonna start with the stuff that I didn't like about it. Firstly, as we mentioned before, you can't really play the entire Steam library on Steam OS. You can only really play Linux or Steam OS games. And that's definitely frustrating if you wanna play the latest Fallout 4 or the new Call of Duty games or any of the new AAA titles that are available on multiple platforms. Unfortunately, the Linux platform and Steam OS indeed is established enough to push developers to also develop for the Steam OS, uh, including all the other platforms that they have to develop for. So it's definitely going to take some time before the Steam OS platform becomes established and you're going to get all the best games and all the latest titles immediately available. Secondly, in terms of a price standpoint, it is slightly more expensive than the next generation consoles starting at $449 right now. So compared to the PlayStation 4 that can be had for anywhere between $350 to under $400. Same thing with the Xbox One. So if you're in it for a pure price perspective, this thing is more expensive. Now in terms of the Steam controller, although it kind of accomplishes the task of replacing your keyboard and mouse in a couch-like environment, in terms of giving you the sensation of uh, using a keyboard and mouse, that's definitely not there. And it's certainly not as good as using a uh, dual thumbstick controller like you have on the Xbox One and indeed the PlayStation 4 controller. And for action-oriented games, I still would prefer a controller that has dual thumbsticks rather than these uh, touchpads at the current moment. Furthermore, just like the Alpha, you don't have any options to upgrade your GPU. Pretty much any version of the Steam Machine you're going to get, you're going to be stuck with the GTX 860M, which is quite upsetting because I know there's other Steam Machines out there that have options to get a faster GPU, which is essential if you want to get better overall gaming performance. And last but not least, one of the biggest problems with uh, this machine and indeed any Steam OS console is the fact that there's a huge discrepancy in terms of performance. When you take a look at the results, that we demonstrated when playing games and even uh, doing some uh, CPU related tasks, the Steam OS platform is 10 to 5% times slower than what we get on Windows 10, which is certainly upsetting because the whole objective of having a dedicated uh, operating system for a gaming console would to be optimized the gaming performance. And that's sadly not the case. If you're gonna get this thing, might as well install Windows OS on top of the uh, Steam OS to get the best kind of gaming performance possible. Now let's move on to the pros of the Steam Machine. Firstly, it's super quiet, very compact, smaller than any next generation console at the moment, and it's gonna be smaller than any kind of custom computer that you can build since the architecture is pretty much bespoke to it. The GPU is directly integrated, directly into the motherboard, so you can't really make any kind of custom build computer that's gonna compete with this thing in terms of form factor. The other nice thing about this thing is that there are some upgradable options. You can change out the CPU for a faster CPU, you can add more RAM, and you can change out the hard drive to an SSD if you want faster read and write performance, which is always a good thing. Furthermore, when you get the Steam Machine, you're also getting a full-on computer. That means you can install any type of operating system that you would install in a regular PC. So you can easily do a dual boot configuration with Windows 10 and Steam OS, uh, or you can just run Windows if you want and use this as just a dedicated PC, which is uh, definitely pretty competitive when you start looking at, at the 449 price point. Additionally, as we mentioned before, even though Steam OS is not compatible with the full Steam library, that doesn't mean you can't play your full Steam library since it has uh, the in-home game streaming capabilities that's found in every Steam client. So you can play Fallout 4, you can play any of the latest titles that you can play on your PC because of that feature. Now, besides these things that we talked about, one thing I have to mention is the Alienware Alpha. Firstly, Dell has kind of dropped the price a little bit. So if you check out on Amazon, you can get the Alpha for under $400 dollars and that's uh, definitely a nice little saving compared to the steam machine because they're pretty much identical in terms of the hardware and as a bonus uh, the alpha actually comes with windows 8 installed and you can easily upgrade that to windows 10 and if you want to run steam os since it's a free open source platform you can do a dual boot configuration with windows 10 and uh, the steam os running on the alpha and have pretty much the best of both worlds and have all of the advantages of this machine and plus the advantage of of running Windows 10. So uh, basically, if you are interested in this thing, 
I would say get the alpha. But really other than that guys, that's really it. If you like this video, definitely give us a thumbs up. And if you wanna make videos like this possible, uh, go ahead and use our Amazon affiliate links for anything that you're gonna get off of Amazon. Doesn't cost you anything extra, but it helps make us make videos like this possible. And uh, we definitely love to thank all of you guys that do so on a regular basis. It really does help us a lot. And we would love to continue forward in making content that you guys want to see. But uh, really, other than that, thanks again for watching and we'll see you later. Take care.